What was your first like big look, I guess? Um, I would say 5 a.m. in Toronto. 5 a.m. Toronto. Yeah. So, that, so all this is new, man. Yeah, it's been a year. crazy year, man. Best way of your life. <laughs> So wait, did you know? So how does this work? Do you know like Drake's gonna use one of your beats, or do you just kind of like um, wake up one day? Uh, it's a little both. Like um, Boy Wonder just texts me like I'll send Boy Wonder some beats that he'll work on, whatever, and he'll be like, he'll just text me like at five in the morning. Yo, by the way, we got a placement on this album, or something like that. So um, when I heard about Five in Toronto, he texted me. It was like around five a.m. or not even well after that. Um, he's like, Yo, Drake just bodied this beat, and I was like, Wow, that's crazy. So. Then they just happened to put it right, right out that same night. That same night? Yeah, it was crazy. Everyone wants to know about fucking me, you know what I got it. When did you make that beat? This was around the same time I produced some um, NBA for Joe Button because it kind of sounds similar. Um, mm -hmm. Probably like two, three months ago, around there. And um, basically, I, I found a Pimp C intro from, um, I found a Pimp C like audio from YouTube. And I just, I just, it was like very inspirational. So I took it and, and I sampled it and I used it on a little beat that I started, which was the beat. And I sent it off to Boy Wonder and he was like, wow, this is crazy. So I get, and then he worked on it. He added, well, he had, he had like the horns and beefed up the drums and whatever. And he sent it to Ross. Cause originally it was a Rick Ross record. Okay. And then, um, yeah, um, I get Ross ended up using it. And I, I guess he wanted to add Jay-Z on it. Or somebody on it, and um, I guess when Jay Z heard it, he was like, "Yo, I need this for my album. Like, this is this is for me. Like, this is basically my story." So you know, no, I, I guess you know, Ross is not gonna say no to Jay Z. Let's talk about your other big look. No new friends. Yeah. Big uh, DJ Khaled record. Yeah. Just, just how did that come about? Um, basically, um, Boy Wonder. This is around Grammy week. Um, Boy Wonder was like, "Yo, I need you guys to like fly out to LA and we gotta work on this Drake album." So um, me and my friend Alan Ritter, he's also a co-producer on it. Um, we just flew out there and um, we were at Drake's crib. We was at, at his house in California and he was Drake. We, we was like vibing. Drake is a dumb cool dude. Um, he came up with the acapella, he's like, yo, I got an acapella, and I wanted to be like the No New Friends remix. I mean, the Started From The Bottom remix. Okay. So we started working on it, and Drake came in the room, it's just, he gave his input on it, on it stuff like that, and it came out crazy. And um, I guess since his relationship with Khaled is so strong, I guess he just gave Khaled the record. It wasn't gonna go for his album, but he gave it to Khaled. Talk about uh, one of my favorite songs, the, the, the song you did for French Montana. Yeah. Um, we go wherever we want. Yeah. Train Neil and Raekwon. Yeah. yeah. Um, basically, French came to my studio. This was like in 2011, and I played him some beats, whatever, and he loved them. And I guess, and then the day after he left, I emailed him that beat. That was like the only beat he, he yeah, he really used in mind that. I, like I, I sent him like three beats probably, and that was the one he picked. And I got a call like in 2000 this year. It was, and there was like, yo. Um, I think French is gonna use that for his album because he's about to go in the studio with Raekwon. And I was like, oh, that's crazy, so. And then boom, that's, just. Yeah, that's how that came about. Um, you guys can catch me on twitter.com slash vinyls, V-I-N-Y-L-Z, or instagram.com slash vinyls. And you are now watching Global Grind TV.